So once again, I have my coil on plug uh, bench uh, test set up here. Uh, obviously, I appreciate that clearly the plug is not under compression here, guys, but I've got it set up and firing at a particular rate. There's the scope, there's the trace, actually showing you the uh, secondary trace. Again, just being picked up by my lead, nothing fancy. And I've got it on the telly here, so you can actually maybe see it in a wee bit clearer detail, right? So again, same old, same old. Um, here's where the trigger pulse, if we could see it, the trigger pulse is being applied from my signal generator here. If we could see it, this is where the, uh, it, uh, the five volt uh, pulse uh, would be in this area right here. And it's telling the uh, igniter within the, within the uh, coil and plug assembly to actually turn on the current to the primary coil. This is what you can see here on the trace. Um, so the, the magnetic field, if you will, is charging. Um, the trace, uh, when the pulse uh, drops off to zero here, um, it will turn off the uh, igniter. Of course, when it turns off the igniter, the primary current flow would stop, collapsing the magnetic field, inducing the uh, high tension voltage into the secondary, giving us our firing line here, right? So you can clearly see on the trace, we have a firing line quite clear, and we have the spark line quite clear residual energy uh, when the fire when the spark ext extinguishes right here the residual energy is just ringing out right okay so what uh, i've showed you guys this before i want to show you something interesting that you can actually simulate um on the bench so we know that by looking at the secondary tray uh, gives you an idea of the operating conditions within the cylinder right and this is pretty typical again it's not operating under compression so uh, the spark lane, sorry, the firing lane is perhaps a wee bit lower than what it would normally would be if it was under compression. Obviously, there's no air fuel mixture here either. It's just operating within air. Obviously, that's going to affect the height of the uh, firing lane as well. But what I want to actually show you here is, can you see here on the trace, how uh, this is a pretty smooth pretty linear line on the spark line here, right? Got that set up so we can have a nice smooth lines that we can clearly see uh, any changes in. So what I want to show you here is, if you have certain conditions prevail within the cylinder, it can be reflected on the spark line. And namely, um, turbulence. Turbulence within the cylinder with respect to the charge uh, if it's being disrupted and there's a lot of swirl, excessive swirl and turbulence, uh, you know, mixing uh, within the, uh, the cylinder, it can actually disrupt the uh, spark line because the spark plug itself can actually be impinged upon by the conditions. Uh, it can shift the spark laterally, if you will, right? Causing uh, a disturbance in the spark line. And I can demonstrate that to you. So... This typically happens, guys, when you have um, a situation prevail, again, that disrupts the, the normal compression cycle or the normal um, combustion process within the uh, cylinder itself, right? Um, EGR faults, if you have excessive EGR making its way into the, uh, the cylinder, can also disrupt the spark line here with respect to its linearity. So just a quick uh, voiceover here, guys, because uh, during the video shoot, I completely forgot to mention the fact that turbulence on the spark line like this is a classic uh, scenario where you have potentially a burnt exhaust valve. As you can imagine, a burnt exhaust valve is going to allow the, um, the air fuel charge to escape uh, generating a turbulence or um, a mixing scenario. Uh, this shouldn't be there during a normal compression cycle and it, as it reaches the point of ignition. So keep that in mind. Also consider the fact, is this a single cylinder scenario or a multiple cylinder scenario? In which case you can make a distinction between potentially a burnt valve or an EGR issue. Right. And I can easily actually simulate this by doing nothing more than taking um, some compressed air. Uh, I've read this uh, in some textbooks here, guys, right? So, um, but I also want to give some credit to uh, Tom Leck. Uh, I don't know if you guys know Tom. He's an air conditioning guy out of uh, San Francisco. He mentioned this in a comment many, many moons ago. And I thought of him actually when I got around to actually trying this, right? So this actually has a surprising effect on the spark line. So all I'm going to do 
is actually apply a little air across the gap here. Maybe you can hear it, right? You can actually hear it affecting the spark. But check out the impact. Again, it's going to be out of frame here, guys. But all I'm doing is applying a little air across the uh, spark. Keep an eye on the uh, trace here. That's just a tiny, that's just a few pounds of pressure actually across the spark. Again, I'm just, all I'm doing is blowing some air across the uh, two electrodes, right? The center electrode and the ground electrode. And you can see that's a pretty clear change in the trace. That would be easily distinguishable from a normal scenario. And you can see the turbulence in the line. Not only is it actually not only is it actually affecting the linearity of the line, but you can see the spark duration is shortening considerably as well, right? So anyway, I thought that was an amazing change in the trace just by simply disrupting the spark. And again, look at my regulator here. I've got just a few pounds of pressure on this thing here, guys, right? This is this is not heavy volume coming out of this thing by any stretch of the uh, imagination. Now again, this clearly we're in free air here and not in a cylinder, not under compression. But you can see, you can simulate um, the turbulence within the cylinder easily, and it's easily distinguishable on the spark line there. Again, you guys, most some of you guys at least will know this: firing line, spark line, charge line. Firing line, spark line, spark extinguishes, and uh, uh, ring out, just getting rid of the residual energy in the system. Amazing uh, change in the appearance of the spark line, just by disrupting that the arc just a wee bit. Okay, that's it, guys. Uh, I know some of you guys will be getting sick of this. Maybe you're no uh, secondary ignition fans, but uh, at the moment, I am. <laughs> and until it's in my system... You're going to have to tolerate it. That's that, boys. Cheers.